for those in attendance and UFC fans watching around the world. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. It's time! It's astounding to see how much interest Nick Diaz's comeback to MMA has generated. After six years away from the sport, Diaz makes his return on the stacked UFC 266 card in a five-round fight against ruthless Robbie Lawler. The legendary return is a rematch of a bout that took place a whopping 17 years ago, the longest period of time elapsed between two matches. We here at Athlete Central are here to tell you everything you need to know about the fight, but before we dive into it, make sure to hit the like button to support the channel if you are enjoying the content. Now. Let's get into the Ultimate Fight Breakdown. Let's rewind back to 2004 to analyze the first fight between Diaz and Lawler. Both fighters were at the early stages of their careers. Diaz was 20 years old with a record of 8-2 heading into the bout, being relatively unknown to the public at the time, and given that it was only his second UFC fight at the time, that was normal. His personality hadn't had a chance to shine yet. On the other hand, the 22-year-old Robbie Lawler was one of the hottest prospects in the welterweight division, holding a record of 8-1 with his only loss coming due to an injury. Experts expected the bout to be a classic striker versus grappler matchup, but they couldn't be further off. The fight started off with a hopping sidekick from Diaz, and before another strike was thrown, Nick started to taunt Lawler and UFC fans saw the first glimpse of what would go on to become a staple of the Diaz brothers. Sometimes it hurts their chances of success like in the recent Nate bout against Leon Edwards. Nate had him hurt at the end of the fifth round and instead of going in for the kill, he started taunting the Englishman. Things were very different in Nick's bout, however. He was taunting Robbie, he was landing strikes, it was all very impressive for a 20-year-old. Diaz knocked Lawler down in the first round and Joe Rogan was in awe of his performance, surprised at the amount of success that Nick, a BJJ expert, was having against Lawler. Robbie did land some nice shots throughout the first round, but Nick remained unfazed, even talking to him in the process. Towards the end of the first round, Robbie had his big moment and landed a big right hand followed up by a knee. At the start of the second round, Lawler landed some nice shots early on, but Nick scored a one-punch KO with a beautiful counter. Overall, their fight was very back and forth. Both landed some good shots, but while Lawler primarily used his boxing, Nick used more kicks and engaged in the clinch a couple of times, although the fight never went to the ground. If the rematch 17 years later is going to be anything like the first fight, then we're in for one competitive matchup. Unbelievable! He's got over to congratulate Nick Diaz. Incredible! The reason for this title was that since Nick Diaz's last fight, Lawler has fought eight times, most recently in a decision loss to Neil Magny, where he got absolutely dominated and showed that he is really past his prime because his losses, apart from that, since losing the title have been to elite competition, Teron Woodley, Rafael Dos Anjos, Kobe Covington, and a very controversial loss to Ben Askren. He slammed the wrestler on the mat and proceeded to land vicious ground and pound that most refs would probably stop the fight for. But Herb Dean let Askren fight it out and after somehow getting back to his feet, Ben caught Lawler in a bulldog choke and Herb stopped the fight. Lawler hadn't tapped but Herb thought that he went out. This stoppage caused a lot of controversy in the MMA sphere. Let us know in the comments whether you think that this was a bad stoppage or not. Lawler is clearly past his prime, and these types of fights against fellow legends are the way to go, because he's not a real contender anymore. His striking isn't enough to hold off superior wrestlers, and there are a lot of them in the top 15 at 170. Rematches against the likes of Matt Brown and Carlos Condit would also be a good move by the UFC. Considering Lawler's last win came in 2017 against Cowboy Cerrone, he really needs to win this fight to get his confidence back up. Moving on to Nick Diaz, when you take a look at his last five opponents, it's clear to see Nick was not taking easy matchups before his hiatus from the sport. Victories over Paul Daly and BJ Penn gave Diaz the opportunity to fight for the interim title against the natural-born killer, Carlos Condit. 
He ended up losing that fight via unanimous decision, but his star power meant that following George St. Pierre's title defense against Condit, Nick got a chance to capture the belt from GSP. The Canadian ended up dominating Diaz wherever the fight went and seemed unbothered by his attempts to taunt him. Diaz left the sport for almost two years after his defeat to the welterweight GOAT and returned to face the middleweight GOAT, Anderson Silva, about which he would also lose via unanimous decision. The outcome did get overturned later on because Silva failed his post-fight drug test for performance-enhancing drugs and got a one-year suspension. Diaz also failed a drug test, however, his was merely for marijuana and he got suspended for a whopping five years because it was his third offense. They've done everything they can to keep me from being all the way on top where I should be. They've been, they've been did everything they could to keep me from proving to the world that I'm the best fighter in the world, which I am. They want to have nothing but but you know they all they, they want to have nothing but um, weak sauce fighters. And Ironically, USADA has recently announced that they will no longer punish athletes who test positive for marijuana. Unlucky Nick. Let's move on to the attributes. In terms of anthropometry, Diaz is a bit bigger. He's six one with a seventy six inch reach, while Lawler is two inches shorter in both departments, five eleven and a reach of seventy four. Robbie is 39 years old and Diaz is one year his junior. The six years away from the sport could give new life to Diaz, as if he's even younger or potentially free of ring rust, which is a really hotly contested topic. Let us know in the comments below whether you believe in ring rust. Before we dive into the striking stats, let's take into account that both of these fighters have been fighting for a very long time, and this is their career average. So in terms of their striking offense, Diaz is a lot more output, landing 5.4 significant stripes per minute, a whopping 1.9 more than Robbie's 3.5. Ruthless is more accurate though, having a 45% success rate compared to Diaz's 42. Lawler rarely engages in a technical striking battle, his goal is to get a knockout, and he's willing to wait a bit to find the perfect shot to end the night, which would explain his lower output. This has gotten him an astounding 20 KOs and TKOs throughout his career, compared to Diaz's 13. Nick has more kicks in his arsenal, using them as weapons to poke at his opponents and maintain distance, with teeps often being used. It's no secret that Nick Diaz is a far more superior grappler in his matchup but let's take a look at how big of an advantage he really has. Diaz averages around 1.3 takedowns per 15 minutes, almost doubling Lawler's .68. Those attempts from Lawler must have been early on in his career because recently he's fought nothing but elite level grapplers that he'd be foolish to take down. Surprisingly, Lawler is much more successful with his takedown attempts, landing them at a 64% accuracy compared to Nick's 33. Again, this can be explained by how rare Robbie's takedowns are. Nick shoots way more often and fighters expect a BJJ expert to take the fight to the mat, so they drill takedown defense even more in preparation. As far as takedown defense, it's pretty even. Robbie has a 64% rate while Diaz has 60. Usually Diaz would love to go to the ground and has even pulled guard throughout his career, but GSP was able to completely nullify Diaz's ground game with dominant wrestling. I'm sure Diaz wouldn't like to be taken down if a victory against Lawler led him to fights against the likes of Colby Covington, Burns, or Kamaru Usman, all very dominant grapplers. In terms of submissions, according to the official UFC statistics, Lawler hasn't attempted a single submission throughout the entirety of his UFC career. Fun fact, he does have one submission win via armbar against the then one and three Jeremy Brown in the King of the Cage. Looking to wrestle up possibly, but no, Robbie with the armbar, and he gets the tap right there from Jeremy Brown. Diaz attempts on average one sub per 15 minutes. The third degree BJJ black belt has eight submission wins on his records. Five of them are via Kimura or armbar, so protect your arms, Robbie. Uh, this is a very tough fight to predict, not just the outcome, but also how the fight is going to play out. One fighter is way out of his prime, one in five in his last six, and the other hasn't fought in six years, and their first fight was 17 years ago. 
Will we get another striking battle with limited clinching from Diaz like their first bout? Or will Nick implement a more grappling-based game plan? One thing you can be sure of is that Nick will definitely continue the taunting. He won't pass up the opportunity to capitalize on his chance to fight in front of the fans again. Stocked in slaps, talking trash while punching Lawler in the face, all of that is to be expected in the upcoming fight. Lawler definitely wants to stay off the mat and keep the fight in boxing range. Stay away from Nick's kicks, his clinching, and of course the takedown threat. The bookmakers give him a good chance of doing that. Lawler's victory is valued at minus 140, and Diaz is a plus 120 underdog. Who would you guys put your money on? Leave your answers in the comments below, and as always, thank you so much for watching today's video. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and hit subscribe to never miss an Athlete Central video. Until next time.